It's June 25th, 2022. It's early in the morning and I'm packing up really, really quietly uh, to show you something in the sky that's really, really cool. So I'm at Genmont's Park. There's downtown Montreal. There's the cross on top of the mountain. And we're about 45 minutes from the sun rising. And there you can see the crescent moon. But there's something even cooler that I want to show you. Actually, there's five things that I want to show you. Like the sun and the moon, they're also visible in the sky, even in the middle of the city. And once you know they're up there, you won't look at the sky or your calendar the same way again. Three, two, one. I think that most people understand that if you live in the city, you're not going to see that many stars in the sky. Only a few bright ones. To get a good view of the stars and the night sky, you gotta get outside of the city. Because of the intense amount of light pollution in our cities, we are unable to see as many stars as our ancestors did. There's been public awareness campaigns about this problem, but I think there's a downside to this message. I think most people assume, because we can only see very few stars in the urban night sky, we can't see anything in the city other than the moon. But that's not True, under our noses, there's something special you can see with the naked eye. I'm good. Nice silhouette shot, I'm sure. With the naked eye, I can see five dots lined up. You might think they're stars, but they're not. These are planets. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. All five of these planets visible to the naked eye. This is often a surprise to people. They've lived their entire lives not knowing you can always see these planets, even in the city. Now, this morning is pretty unique. The planets rarely all line up like this. Most of the time, some are only visible in the evening or in the morning, and sometimes they're behind or in front of the sun and not visible at all. But today, in late June 2022, all of them are lined up in the early morning and visible to the naked eye. So you might be wondering a couple of things. First, aren't there more than five planets? Where is Uranus and where is Neptune? Those two planets, they're too far away. They're too faint to see with the naked eye. In fact, we only discovered them once we invented the telescope. We've only known about these two planets for a couple hundred years. While Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury, we've known about these for thousands of years. And the second thing you might be wondering is, why are all the planets lined up? Is this a coincidence? No, it's not. But to explain why, we have to go to a record store. Now this isn't gonna be a perfect analogy, but this will look kinda cool and help illustrate my point. So I've got a record here, and we also have the Sun, the five visible planets, and Earth, which we're going to put on the record. If you could get a top-down view of the solar system, you would see the Sun in the middle and the planets going around it. But how does this demonstrate the planets appearing to line up here on Earth? How does the record show that? Well, if we move our perspective to the side, we see that the planets are all rotating around the sun on the same plane, the same level. And from our perspective here on Earth, we see this as the sun and the planets all lined up. Through the course of a day, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And if you imagine there's a line in the sky being drawn out from the sun. Astronomers call this the path of the ecliptic. When night falls, look to the southern sky and picture where the sun traveled in the sky throughout the day. And if you see a bright dot in the sky, ask yourself, did the sun travel through this part of the sky during the day? If not, it's probably a star. But if it is, it might be one of the planets. Are you guys open? You can say yes. <laughs>
you make it a video. In late June, we saw seven things in the morning sky. The sun, the moon, and five planets. Where else do we see the number seven in our day-to-day -day lives? We have seven days in our modern calendar week. The history of why we have that many days is a long road going back thousands of years. Some calendars had 16 days, some had eight days, but here we are now with seven days in our week. How might the planets be involved? Let's go through each day of the week in both English and French. Monday. In English, this day is named after the moon, and in French, it's the same. Moon translates to lune for lundi. Tuesday. This comes from Old English, day of two after the Roman god of war, Mars. And in French, it's more direct. Mardi equals Mars. Wednesday. In English, this comes from the Roman god Woden, equated with the Roman god Mercury. And in French, it's direct again. Mercredi equals Mercury. Thursday. In English, this comes from the day of Thor, equivalent to the Roman god Jupiter. And in French, Judy comes from the Latin day Jovis, or Jupiter. Friday. In English, this is named after the Germanic goddess Frigga, goddess of love, equivalent to Venus. French gets it direct again, with Vendredi equaling Venus. Saturday. English finally gets it direct this time. Saturday comes from Saturn. And in French, Samedi comes from the Latin De Sabbati, Day of the Sabbath. Finally, Sunday. In English, where do you think we got this name from? The sun. In French, this day originates from Latin. It used to be called Dis Solus, meaning Day of the Sun, but this got changed way back in the fourth century to Dis Dominicus, meaning Day of the Lord. So now, French calls this Dimanche. I teach this in my astronomy workshops, going through each day of the week. And by about the second or third day, the group starts to clue in. And most people are surprised to learn that the sun, the moon, and the planets have been hiding inside of their calendars. Take a moment to pause this video. What day of the week are you watching this? And then think about what celestial object today is referring to. So these seven objects, the sun, the moon, and the five planets, they're not just visible to the naked eye, they're embedded in our daily lives. 